In this video, we're going to simplify expressions by using exponent properties, and we'll specifically be focusing on terms that have common bases and what to do with their exponents when they have common bases and they're being multiplied together. So this first exponent property that we're going to look at results from two terms that have the same base. So this number that is not raised into the exponent is called your base. And here we can see that we have common bases and we can see that these common bases are being multiplied. So we're going to look at what do we do when we have common bases that are being multiplied together. And we can kind of figure out a shortcut for this by breaking down what an exponent actually means. So at this point you should know that the exponent of 3 to the power of 2 is represented by 3 multiplied times itself 2 times. 3 times 3 would be 9. You should then also know that 3 to the power of 4 can be represented as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So 3 times itself 4 times. And these are essentially being multiplied. And what I notice here is when I multiply and when I expand those exponents out, what I notice is that I am multiplying six threes together. Three times three times three times three times three times three. And this can really be represented as three multiplied by itself six times, or three to the power of six. So we can rewrite this expression here to be one term with the base of three, and the exponent of 6. And if we look very carefully here, what we notice is that we can get to 6 by taking these two values in the exponents of 2 and 4 and adding them together. So that's our first exponent property. When we have common bases being multiplied, we can simply add their exponents together. So here we're going to summarize this one more time. You can see the example that we did right here. And it says when you are multiplying terms with the same base. So we notice here we have 3 and 3 and they're being multiplied. You can simply add the exponents together and rewrite it as one term with a power. So notice here we have three examples and we're going to rewrite these so that there's only one, for example in part A, one five, or in B there's one negative four, or in C there's one A. So here if I look at part A, what I notice is I have five times five to the power of nine. And in my head I'm thinking five doesn't have an exponent, but I know that five by itself is five multiplied by itself one time. So what I can do is I can write an exponent in there. If there isn't an exponent, you can assume that that exponent is 1 and write it in there. Then from here we notice we have common bases and they're being multiplied. So we can take 9 plus 1, which equals 10, and rewrite this as 5 to the power of 10. Then from here, if we look at this next one, we have negative 4 and negative 4 is our basis, and so those are common. So we can write this as negative 4. I'm going to keep it in parentheses to stay consistent with what I see in the problem. And then I notice we have exponents of 3 plus 5, which would give me 8. And then this last example here, we have common bases of a. So I have a as my base. I then add my exponents together and get an exponent of 28. So now that we've got this down with just one base in a multiplication problem, we're going to look at what we do if we have multiple bases in one problem. So notice here in part A, I have a to the power of 2, a to the power of 5, and then I have b to the power of 3, and b to the power of 6. So if we have multiple bases in one, all we do is focus on one base first and one base second. So notice here that I have a to the power of 2 and a to the power of 5. Those can be condensed together into a to the power of 2 plus 5, which is 7. 
And then I can take the b's, and I have b to the power of 3 and b to the power of 6, and I can write those as b to the power of 3 plus 6, which is 9. So notice here I take my common bases, I apply that same property, and I just simplify it down to these are all of the a's together, and these are all of the b's together. Now if I look over at part b, what I notice is I have a 5 as a base, I have 3 as a base, I have a's as a base, and I have b's as a base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on them one at a time. So here, 5 squared, I notice that that's by itself, and I also note that I can actually evaluate 5 squared. So if I take 5 to the power of 2 in my calculator, I get 25. And that is then being multiplied by 3 fourths. And again, that's a base that's by itself. And I can evaluate this in my calculator by taking 3 to the power of 4, which is 81, times, and I'm going to focus on all of the a's. So I have a to the power of 2, 5, and 1. So I take 2 plus 5 plus 1. That gives me 8. So I have a to the power of 8. And then I have b to the power of 4 by itself. Then from here, I'm almost done. Um, but I can actually multiply the numerical pieces together. So if I take 25 times 81, I end up with 2,025 a to the eighth, b to the fourth. And then this last example here, if I look, I notice that I have 6 to the power of 3 as one base. Then I have a, a, and a, and I have b and b. So I'm going to start with the numerical part of 6 to the power of 3, and that is 216. I then have a's of 2 plus 3 plus 7, so that's going to be a to the power of 12. And then I have b's, which we have 4 plus 6, so b to the power of 10. So the last thing we're going to look at here is what we do with those pesky negatives, because depending on whether or not we have parentheses, actually communicate something different about the problem. So what I'd like you to do is take out your calculator, and then I want you to plug in the following. So you're going to do parenthesis, negative 3, close parenthesis, do the little caret symbol, and press 2. And what you should see happening is you should see that this is equal to 9. And that's because when it's in the parentheses here, this is indicating take negative 3 and multiply it times itself. That's what the parentheses communicate, that that is being multiplied by itself, that negative piece, negative 3 times negative 3 gives us 9. Now, the next thing I'd like you to plug into your calculator is part B. So here I want you to plug in the negative symbol, then a 3, the caret symbol, and then the 2. And what you should see happening is this without parentheses equals a negative 9. And to a lot of students that's confusing. It doesn't make sense to them why part A and part B would give them something different. Part A with the parentheses is communicating this is negative 3 times negative 3. In part B, if we follow the order of operations, what's really happening here is your calculator is taking 3 squared first. And then what it's doing is that negative out in front is really a negative 1. So the reason you're getting that negative 9 is because your calculator is doing the exponent first and then multiplying the, calc or multiplying the value by negative 1 to reach negative 9. So if we see parentheses, so for example, we look down in part C, the parentheses communicate to us that we are taking negative 4 times itself 5 times. So in this case, the parentheses indicate we're taking negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4, times negative 4, times negative 4. And if we multiply that out using our calculator, we find that negative 4 in parentheses raised to the power of 5 is negative 1,024. And then finally, looking again at an example that does not contain parentheses, 
Remember that this is really saying negative 1, there's a negative out in front with no parentheses, times 4 times 4, and then this is really a negative 4 to the 8th. So 4 times 4, 4, 4, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We get a negative 65,536. So just be careful with the negatives. If you see no parentheses, write that negative 1 in there. If you see parentheses, note that you have to have parentheses all the way through because that's saying that that number is being multiplied by itself as a negative number that many times.